Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Platform Analytics Academy session on Wednesday, November the 29th. The year is coming to a close, so we have a couple more sessions this year, and then we'll start the new year off with some really great sessions that we already have in mind. But uh, welcome as usual. If you're new, welcome. Uh, if you're returning, thank you. Uh, some of you, I think, have lunch with us every couple weeks, which is really awesome. Uh, if you're on the East Coast, I guess, uh, maybe breakfast in other places or dinner. Either either or, we appreciate you being here. So a couple quick things, and then we'll get directly into uh, what we have today. So as usual, this is always uh, for you. Uh, we try as hard as we can to bring fresh ideas, better understanding, and practical guidance. I think today would be more about better understanding and practical guidance. I guess it could be fresh ideas as well, depending on the question that is being asked. Uh, but this is definitely for you. This is going. This is being recorded. It will be out in the community later on this evening uh, or early tomorrow morning, as well as out as well as on our YouTube uh, channels that we have out there. So the recording is definitely there for you. So with this being a question uh, and answer session with ask the experts, don't feel like that you have to write down uh, all of the answers because it'll definitely be there for you later on. And I will make sure that I put those uh, questions. Um, with the timestamp into the community and also into uh, the YouTube recording. So you can go directly to that question. And then any questions that are actually um, asked in there, the answer is given via type rather than answered uh, live. I'll definitely make sure that you have those there as well. So again, it is um, one of those uh, situations where you could just sit back and listen, uh, take notes if you choose. But again, the questions and answers will be available for you uh, on the recording. Uh, with question and answers in mind, please make sure that you're utilizing the Q&A uh, portion of Zoom if you can. We will have, uh, this is full of different panelists that are on that are going to answer questions, some via type, some via uh, live. So just make sure that you're putting those questions in there rather than in the uh, chat. If you do have something to share as is related to a particular question, uh, you can you can put that in chat if you would like, just as a, uh, hey, here's another idea type situation. Uh, you can definitely do that. But again, for question purposes, let's make sure that we put those into the Q&A. Uh, safe Harbor. Uh, this is probably a good one for today. Uh, there could definitely be some things that are forward looking statements that are shared today based on a question that is asked. So please do keep that in mind as you ask questions and also as you listen in. Uh, again, my name is Thomas Davis. And today we have um, some of these aren't on yet, but that I know that they'll definitely be trickling in. But of course, Adam, Dan, uh, Isaac is here uh, as well. And as well as Marta, Olga and uh, Robert Jean or RJ, as we like to call him. So they Some will be in and out. They may not be here as, as of yet, but I definitely expect them to be on um, at some point. So with that, this is a Ask the Expert uh, session. So it is an opportunity for you to ask questions um, that you may have. And it is a first come, first serve type situation. So we'll see the questions come into the Q&A and we'll uh, go directly to that. And it looks like they are coming in. So we'll go ahead and get this started. So I asked my panelists if this is a question that you can answer, please um, click the answer live or type the answer. So I'll make sure that I know to call on whoever wants to take that particular question. Uh, if not, I definitely will call on you to see maybe if you can answer those questions. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first one is, can you fully deactivate after activating? And is there a mass roll rollback option? So um, Dave, is this a PA question or is this a an instance question? So, um, and let me see, uh, the second question of his probably is, a second part of that. Uh, oh, go ahead, Robert John. Yeah, I, I think I think they uh, I think they relate to the the new the the new platform analytics experience. Um, okay. While I'm reading, also number two, three, and four. Um, on on one, um, in any way, if it so, um, I'm I'm just assuming that it's on the platform analytics experience. But if if that's the 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 question here. Um, as mentioned before, as of Washington, we are delivering that opt-in uh, where you can act what we call activating the platform analytics experience. And what actually happens is a migration of your existing core UI content. Um, as of Xanadu, uh, again, uh, an opt-in. And as of the current plans, it's uh, Yokohama that we actually want to move forward and, and actually want to do that migration upon upgrade. Can you fully deactivate after activating? Uh, yes, you can. Although um, the number one, um, let's say best practice here is to do it in any way first, of course, on one of your test instances. 
uh, and do your testing there. Uh, so you're you're not you you don't want to do that uh, first time on production. So, um, but it is possible to basically roll that back. Um, on the second one, uh, is there a list of known incompatibilities and which type of ob objects will not migrate? Um, there is indeed, uh, and I, as far as I read here through Workbench widgets, custom interactive filters, content blocks, and report ranges, some of the things uh, are not available yet, but we are actually still working on and then might become available after. Um, so even if you have upgraded already, uh, they will still become available. We are still working on a set of capabilities as well as a set of charts. Do know that when we approach this, we look into the charts that are, of course, most valued and most used out there. Um, so the majority of your use cases that you would like to put within the new UI, within the, the platform analytics experience should be possible with uh, the already existing charts out there. But indeed, it might be that some uh, are not yet. Um, what will happen with the migration is they will get into what we call this uh, compatibility mode, uh, where you can then actually use them, um, which is which is basically just an iframe version of your core UI content. Uh, will we list that list? Absolutely. Um, it's part of the content that I'm planning to push out there. Um, and Thomas, uh, we're working on that together to on the communities, put this, what we call the enablement toolkit um, with one of the deliverables there to have this list as in, okay, this is what's possible right now. This is what's supported right now. This is what's not supported right now and how this moves over the, the coming releases. And uh, Olga or Dan or Thomas, please feel free if I uh, cut short somewhere on something or there's any other thing no, you know no i think you're I think, yeah. yeah those those yeah. are fine yeah um and i think that 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 i love dave came prepared right he he has got yeah. some questions so <laughs> he is. Um, i'm actually now reading three and four so let's give me a second there i i i think that i think that um i think most of his are going um in the same direction so it might actually be good if we can and and i don't know if olga is is seeing those as well if if the two of you um, I think that these would be great to come from the, the both of you as inbound, just because this, these are topics that we have been touching the, the, the past couple months. So I think this is really good. So I don't know if we want to go and straight and try to get all of Dan's knocked out. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, Dave's knocked out real quick or, uh, cause he has had them, they, they may just flow directly together, but if you could, you could clear those, uh, ones that you have done, Robert, RJ, that would, that would help. I, well. I think on number four, as far as I understand, number four, uh, and again, Olga, please feel free to, uh, to what you know about that area. But I, I believe in the sort of, uh, try it out mode. Uh, that's, that's one of the options. Um, they're basically still running in parallel next to one another. So you might still indeed, uh, for a dashboard that you haven't migrated yet, uh, which you still use, um, for example, a report uh, that's being used in multiple dashboards, one of those dashboards did migrate, the other one didn't, you will probably still, or you will still look at the core UI version of that report. Because in that mode there, the, 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 both the worlds are, are still running in parallel. I think oh. what, once you migrate it, the, the classic dashboard will get, responsive dashboard will get inactive. So if you're not admin, you will not see it in the dropdown anymore. But generally, um, the whole process of the migration is meant more to be centralized, um, not per individual end user. Not like we in the home pages we 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 were first relying on the individual users to migrate. In this case, we more uh, the advice is to do it centrally. That the admin manages this, and it goes uh, kind of hand in hand with. Uh, enabling of this unified view where you can from the same place see all the responsive and not responsive dashboards so then uh, people know there's one place to go to look for a dashboard and then if you do it in batches like at some point more dashboard will be within you ui compared to the old ui but there will be like no no impact we, we don't expose it will be pretty hard for the regular non-technical users to find from where they would migrate i would say you can answer the the uh, the next question. Go for it. Go for it. Over. The, yep, thank uh, you. For the dynamic content blocks, uh, 
So upon the migration, dynamic content blocks will not be um, uh, not migrated. They will be still iframe. So you will have all your content, whether you have uh, whatever you have there available. Um, at this moment, um, whenever you create new dashboards in the next experience, in the, we have two types of dashboard, inline and technical. For well, the inline dashboard, we at this moment don't uh, support any dynamic content block. And currently we don't have um, the specific plans to do it. Um, I think we'll also will work more with uh, with you guys with with uh, uh, and customers to understand exact use cases and maybe uh, add it to our roadmap. Uh, the way to do it now in the next experience is with a technical dashboard because there you can have as dynamic blocks as you wish. So there's the, the sky's the limit of what can be done. But um, uh, again, the persona is here is more uh, technical persona indeed. Is there a list of objects that may migrate, but the converted object may not be completely like for like? Will any such scenario be signed, posted to those running the migration? So the question is, when they migrate over to uh, the next ex next experience, uh, is anything that's not going to yeah, be Yeah, we, we, we're same? working now on the documentation to provide um, the uh, overview uh, for you of things which, uh, the discrepancy, right? The things which... We are migrating things, but there is some difference, like how the the new experience work comparing to the classic responsive dashboard. Um, we are still figuring out the way how we're gonna make it available for you, whether it will be the community blog or something else, or if there is any way to find it in the instance. That one still we finalizing, but we are compiling the lists that every customer can access, so that they not only know what is not migrated, but they also know what is where we'll have some differences so you can be uh, prepared for this and you know that it's working as expected or just be ready that it will be this way. Okay, great. Thank you. And, and also, because Dan and I, we would uh, we, we talked about this on the last session that there is an actual blog that we're putting together as well that not only is just the housekeeping type things, but uh, we can we can try to make sure that we put that information, Olga, there as well because that, that's yep. what people will be thinking about before they actually migrate. So. We'll make sure that we get that uh, those list can of things I, on that one as can well. Can I just add a few moments for the for my previous question because there's a few questions in the chat uh, for the technical dashboards. Sure, go for it. Uh, for the technical dashboards, I'm not sure if how you guys are familiar with it's it's pretty much UI builder page, but it will be then shown in the um, so it's it's um, experience page built with. Um, UI builder, which is more technical tool to build, which is have full freedom on the um what we call data binding of dynamic context, scripted content. Um it has way more component. It's uh you can do for like form elements, buttons, uh HTML blocks, and everything could be dynamic. Um it also it also has all the component which inline dashboard has so the standard data visualization available there so the same data visualizations that are available in the inline dashboard are available also in the technical dashboards um, there is just more advanced options uh, possible to do it and um, you would need to have a special role like of the admin or uh UI builder admin, uh, UI builder developer to be able to create those types of uh, dashboards since it's a bit more technical. And and just just to add to what what Olga just mentioned, um, I was mentioning that enablement content before. Uh, one of the documents that I've actually already uh, delivered and that will be uh, posted there soon is uh, a video that talks exactly about that difference. Like what. If, what, what is the simple inline editor, the easy to use responsive dashboard that we've been familiar with? For example, the responsive dashboards as we had them on the core UI versus the more, uh, what, what we now call the, the technical dashboards, which really serve as those more specific use cases where you might um, need to do some additional things for that the UI builder uh, will provide. Uh, so there, there's a video also coming for that one. RJ, did you want to go with the next one? Yeah, well, I um, and, and I, I, I did see that also Marta joined the um, the, the meeting oh, to upgrade oh, her to a uh, panelist. Yep, so he's her. absolutely able to uh, tell me if I'm uh, if I'm wrong. 
yeah. but yeah, on, on that one in particular, um, Yokohama, uh, as mentioned before, in Yokohama, according to the current plan, uh, it would be upon upgrade that we actually want to get you activated on that platform analytics experience, which will have those equivalents um, of your reports and PA widgets as data visualizations and the dashboards as the new dashboards. Um, will the legacy ones still be available? I, I think physically they might still be there, but uh, not active. Um, so it's not they're not available to still be looking into that experience. Um, simply, we, we uh, go one way forward is to also make sure that we are not, uh, we as, as service now, as well as you as, as, our, as our customers are not creating um, this additional technical debt on, on multiple different environments in, in parallel. And, and Olga or Marta, that's correct, right? They, they are physically, I think, still there. We're not removing any content. Uh, but we are not, not, yeah, we are not deleting any content that is migrated or any, or any content after the activation of platform analytics experience. Uh, and a couple of more Dave's. I don't know if we've we've addressed all the yeah, we could Dave, I think it was up to nine, I think, when I last I saw. Yeah, I think we're at number five for him. So I think this is the next in line. Smart, but maybe we can just go with five and see. Yeah. It's a really <laughs> good one. Come prepared, yeah. This is a really good question because it's saying it's the for those who aren't reading it directly, it's like we hear that we heard recently that reports will all convert to library based di uh, data visualizations. Will interactive filters and breakdowns be converted directly into localized filters? within each next experience dashboard, or will they also convert to library-based filters? Let's start, let's start with that first. And yeah, I think- I, I can take that one. The mm -hmm. um, interactive filter is uh, that were officially saved into a library also before, uh, they will be converted uh, into filters uh, into the library, also up in platform analytics experience. Uh, for the instead for the breakdown um, filters, so the filters that you were adding at dashboard page level um, that are called the breakdown filters, those one will actually be migrated only as part as the dashboard itself. And this is exactly for the second part of the question. Exactly. Yep. To have the duplication, right? Because you were saying if it will cause duplication, so not to cause it, it will be just directly on the dashboard. So then only your um, interactive filters will be migrated, which probably already a very clean list. Um, so you will have one-to-one -one list in the filter library as you had in the uh, in the classic. So to, just to clarify for everybody then, if you have, if you currently today on your dashboard have it's a breakdown dashboard that in the upper left corner, you've got a breakdown that you can select one or more elements that applies to all tabs on that dashboard. That is not going coming over or is, or is that still going to be just a filter on the, uh, on the converted dashboard? If it's a breakdown uh, filter, it will be just a filter on the migrated dashboard on the converted okay. dashboard. Yep. But it's, it's not going to be in the library till the editor or whoever like wants to actually add it to the library. All right. Great. Uh, I can take uh, the next question. Um, okay. Well, the, uh, again, from Dave, uh, can you expand more on the requirements for next experience UI and not analytics adoption? Will uh, there also be a mandate for customers to adopt UI itself? If Yakahoma will force next experience analytics, does that mean that uh, will also force general adoption of the UI? Uh, no, it doesn't. So you might have built hundreds of applications or dozens of applications, and we are not forcing you to uh, rebuild it. Um, it's up to you whenever you see the value. Uh, whenever you build new one, we are encouraging you to build with a new experience just because it has more options. It's uh, less prone for the uh, breaking upon the upgrade. Uh, it's uh, way better, uh, has way better customizations and overall UX. But for your existing experiences, it's at this point of time, there is no timeline on the forcing customers. At this point of time, we are not planning to force customers to um, move all of the applications. Um, so it's up to you when you want to uh, move and if you want to move at this point. Is, would it be safe to say 
then that uh, that's part that would be part of the reason that we brought the platform analytics workspace out of the workspace and into the experience on the main navigation menu. Yeah. So we have because there could yeah because you might have the main navigation menu for a layout. You might have that going forward for the time being. Yeah. Yes, we'll still suggest to use the u new unified navigation in general for a better experience, but it doesn't mean that you need to rebuild all the current applications that you have into a workspace. But using the new unified navigation menus, I think that will extremely benefit on the uh, kind of the operation of where to find the content. Scheduled reports. The question is, will scheduled reports also be migrated? Migration to platform analytics experience. Yes, they will. Um, they will uh, migrate for all the uh, um, reports that we can migrate. In the sense is like if we are migrating a report to fully to our data visualizations, uh, then also the schedule uh, like export will be migrated. Uh, otherwise, it will still be maintained uh, in the previous uh, schedule, like export for the report uh, reference. Future plans. So another question, I, I don't know if Robert John, you're going to address this. It's future plans regarding integration or connection of process mining information in a dashboard or visualization. So and it talks about, so we have some of the current limitations, but so do we have any info on that specifically? Um, I'll I'll try um, for as for as far as as um, I I know the uh, the process mining plan uh, in combination with actually our dashboards as well as our insights feature um, there is close collaboration between us as platform analytics and the process mining team uh, we're continuously looking into okay how can we support one another with our use cases because we know that it's um, that it's close. Um, the, the the insights that we are showing as well as the insights that you will learn from your process mining information. Um, I believe in, was it Washington? No, it was Vancouver, the process mining map, the, the, the workbench map, they, uh, that one was added to the dashboard. If specifically um, a sub-level of that, like a, a specific number of uh, records uh, to highlight that within a dashboard, I honestly don't know um but i can absolutely find out and we can maybe follow up after um one thing that i do know is that we are also looking into how can we utilize process mining information in other analytics features for example the uh, washington or vancouver washington delivered proactive insights and those are the insights that you now see in the right hand side side panel of the of the new dashboards to also have process mining information, like a process mining insight, something that was learned from process mining data uh, directly into your dashboard UI, uh, more as a readable uh, normal text insight and not so much a widget that you have to first consume and then figure out what the insight is. So uh, that that I do know for, for this part. I'm not sure if someone else knows more about process mining dashboard specifically on that um, like the number of records from safe filters or from a specific path in the model. Um, otherwise, I, I'm, I'm happy to figure, uh, um, get the answer and, and make sure that we uh, can uh, reconnect on that. Yeah, I think RJ, whatever, if there's anything existing that you can that you can get your hands on, if you can just yeah. make sure you get it to me and I'll make sure I attach it to the community event. Yeah, I think really, really just thinking about also kind of related to that is process optimization or um, data uh, as a data source for, you know, as just a data source as well. And that I don't believe should be an issue because those are all, the data itself is, you know, is, is your know, machine learning and it's, you know, looking at the other uh, massive data collections, but it's the, the outcomes from it. My understanding is are just in standard table, the, you know, the outcome reports, but yeah, we'll, we'll have to follow up on that. Now, another question from Dave. Will ServiceNow be creating any support or commercial offerings to help customers with their migrations? If so, are any default of, uh, details available? What I can say, I know I can speak a little bit to this right now, and I don't know if others are going to have that. Um, because you know that uh, we are working on enablement materials 
today that uh, I think Robert John has talked about in several of these sessions that uh, we're working towards to actually have you know, a lot of materials for you. But this is a question going into an, any actual like commercial offerings. I know that our impact team has on their agenda to have a uh, to have an, an accelerator an impact excel if you are an impact customer for the, that to help out with the migration but i know it's still just a but that's not it's not their top priority right now we have a couple of others that are within the analytics world that are their top priority and it's all just a question of you know, getting getting on the list so i so my so the question so the, the long answer is well the short answer is yes there will be the longer answer is we don't know exactly what that timeline will look like um, but there should be something coming from a commercial offering perspective so that the second part of this any details available not that i'm aware of yet so i don't know if anyone else has more information on that i i, I know that i know that now learning is working on some stuff and and i, I would expect mm -hmm. it to be 2024 obviously yeah but um you know a, a definitive date no i don't we don't have that i think it's it's easy to say 2024 and i would expect it to be probably early by mid-year uh even but again mm -hmm. an exact date we don't have that at this point yeah yeah I, I just wanted to add there the uh uh indeed now learning i was thinking about um on what you just mentioned dan of the uh enablement material uh type of enablement material that we want to proactively put out there is the material that you might need uh, to for example enable uh, your own organization so all those uh, like mini PowerPoints, as well as mini videos, as in, um, yes, we are aware that there might be a few things um, different, like you used to create maybe a report in the report designer that will now be the FIS designer. Um, it's all for the better. And, and we, we we love the new features and they're much better in every, every form, uh, but it's still a change. And therefore we want to put all these um, snippets of information out there on the community for for you to not just consume, but actually to download them, maybe create your own uh, enabled material for if you want to use that internally. Um, so those are things like um, what's new in uh, type of uh, PowerPoints. It's um, what happens with, uh, for example, my old reports, my old indicators, those kind of things uh, before and after type of uh, presentations. Like this is how it was looking before. This is how something will work after. So all these these kind of things you can expect for uh, all the individual features that we are uh, putting out there as part of the platform analytics experience. Yeah, and like you I said, RJ, I mean we're we're currently working on that, and I would I would think that I feel confidently saying that we'll we'll have that at a really good spot to be released in the next couple of weeks. Uh, worst case by the beginning of 2024, but I think in the next couple of weeks we'll have that library out there, and it and it would be something that will be consistently added to. So uh, look for great stuff there. Yeah, and, and one of the things that actually, uh, Thomas, that's a, that's a good, and I just reminded myself on it. Um, I, I actually hoped that we could do maybe a platform academy session specifically on uh, enablement material, um, and that might yeah. not be December yet because I think we're we're already uh, uh, nearing the, nearing the end there. But maybe somewhere in Q one, we do a session where we're just going to elaborate on uh, what's out there and how you can use it. Yeah, we can definitely get that on the schedule. Absolutely. And, and we already had a few sessions, uh, like like you mentioned before. Uh, we did the sessions on the we actually two sessions on the value. We did we did a session on the migration. We did a session on the householding um, thing. So there's already just, quite some other. Yeah, I just want to follow up too. I know we have we happen to have someone who can actually speak with actual information about the commercial potential commercial offerings on through via Impact. So Samantha Jane, could you? Uh, Hi there, guys. Yeah, um, great to meet you all. So, yeah, um, I'm actually the um, ServiceNow internal resource who's responsible for building out uh, the impact accelerators. Some of you may be familiar with that. So um, based on our next uh, impact release, which is currently scheduled for uh, February, early February 2024, we are actually building out two accelerators. Um, they will be available to you um, if you are an impact customer. Um, and we will be looking for pilots who would be um, pilot customers who would be happy to take us forward in that um, uh, early development cycle. So please reach out to your CSM. Um, but yes, we will have both the jump start and a tune up for performance analytics um, currently roadmapped for release um, early February 2024.
So it's not specifically targeted on the migration process, but it's but so it is, uh, but it as, become... part, as part of the tune up. Um, and this is all uh, under the, the safe harbor um, notification, yes. but as, as part of uh, the tune up accelerator, yes, we are planning on covering elements around the migration uh, process. Fantastic. Good. I wanted to get that clear if I do. Thanks. No problem. Thank you. It's always good to have a uh, have a have a guest speaker who is who can speak as an expert on the stuff that we don't know about uh, that we only have light details on. So thank Indeed. you. No problem. Uh, the question is: Can you report on the indicators and widgets by the dashboards that they live on? Yeah, so I believe. Go ahead. Somebody was going to say something. I was just going to say I. In the classic UI, I was starting to write out a, a, a response, but then it was getting to be too complex. In the classic UI, there isn't really a nice, and when I mean classic UI, I mean the current menu navigation platform, or sorry, performance analytics dashboards in the, the menu nav. There is not a clean way that'll tell you directly that says, you know, for you know, how, which dashboard does this report show up on? Or what are all the reports and widgets that show up on this dashboard? There is a, there is a tool that will actually show you the, uh, I can't remember off the top of my head what it's called, but from, from any one of the components within, within the, the core UI analytics, there is a way that you can see all the connections. So from a dashboard, why am I blanking out on the name of it? Uh, you know, it's not the dashboard properties, but it's the, Oh, I'll have to look at that again. So, but that's on a dashboard, but dashboard level, it's not like a report that that'll give you anything anything uh, uh, aggregated. Um, but uh, on the uh, there is we have we have done some some testing and playing around with a database view that would join the necessary tables together to be able to get a pretty good sense of. Uh, the relationship between dashboards and their indicators and reports um, that uh, I think we can probably take a note on. And I, I know I've created one last year and that seemed, that seemed to work pretty well. So if there's other ideas, and then though, I also want to mention about Marta, what's what you can, if, if what you're, if what you've got coming up next year uh, for the, uh, you know, for, to help with the migration, the, the, some of those tools, if that's going to cover that at all. Uh, other like the migration itself. No, I'm talking. About, yeah, so the, uh, the 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 helper that that we are in early stages of right now. That we hope to come out first. You know, first half or you know, sometime in 2024 is the to that will give you like a lot of the usage stats of the current dashboards to really help you. You've talked about that before, like. Yes, we talked that. about that before. We are. Yeah. Um, we are reviewing this with the internal team uh, on the bandwidth uh, that we have and which are the next steps. Uh, some of the ideas is to inform better of like, uh, or like let you know if you want to filter out which type of content you want to migrate. Maybe you are not interested uh, on uh, older dashboards or unused dashboards or unused reports and you don't want to migrate them and move them to platform analytics experience as well as you might not be uh, like we want to um, kind of inform you if there are uh, reports or dashboards uh, that are not shared with anyone and the owners are not part of their company anymore. So in that case, they, their users and the owner will be inactive. So nobody else has really access to them and it might not be needed anymore to, to migrate them or to move them into platform analytics experience. Yeah, and so. she she added something in the chat. It, it's PA Admin Console you're referring to and it's useful just wondering if Next Experience will work better with reporting on widgets and dashboards. Like, is there anything additional? Oh, definitely. Yeah. That the next experience, that, that's one of the primary drivers actually is uh, to make it. And I don't know if, you know, if the, uh, if some of the other inbound PMs can speak to that in any more detail, but I know that's an important element of the uh, next experience with, uh, versions of the dashboards. Yeah. We haven't um, yet created a new uh, admin uh, 
uh, center or admin console for uh, platform analytics. Um, we are also uh, like doing discovery and work on what's gonna be uh, how we are gonna we can deliver you usage information for the new uh, dashboards and uh, that visualizations. Okay, great. If you have Thanks. a specific top top asks of what are you using consoles for, kind of top features you are interested in, more than welcome to add in the chat. We'll copy it after as a part of our research. Or if you're interested, you can send an email to either me and Marta if, if you're interested to be part of the interview uh, while we learning on the next experience uh, admin uh, center. And I just did find what the what the the functionality. I know they talked. Someone mentioned about the the admin console, and that's part of it. But I think a better place where you get more detail and you know more specific information is if you do a launch dependency analysis or a dependency assessment from any from just about any performance analytics or reporting um, component. So if you're on a dashboard. There's a you know, the context menu in the upper left. One of the options under that dashboard will be to launch dependency assessment. And you'll get a visual of everything that's included on that dashboard. Uh, that, that, and you can do the same thing for a widget, for example. I can launch dependency assessment for just an individual widget, which will then tell me um, are there, you know, which I, I can then see where, you know, where there might be additional dashboards that that same widget might appear on. That's what I was thinking of, the dependency assessment. RJ, do you want to go with, I think I think you, you checked the next one, if you want to go ahead and go with that yeah. one. Uh, sure. The um, So, and and I, I also hope that Marta can keep me honest. In, in the beginning, before you were here, Marta, I, I talked about the migration, um, as well as the fact that the things that we already support will just be the a new improved version uh, the ones we don't will get into that incompatibility mode the um the um, I've, for what i specifically there mentioned was um some things that might not be supported right now like for example uh, washington opt-in uh, but will be supported with with xanadu um or maybe with yokohama um they i think the migration script will be smart and intelligent that we can still replace them then. Yes, correct. Yep. Yeah. With the emphasis again on do it in you know in a sub if do it in a sub prod environment. Yeah, to, that, uh, that, that, that for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it will not be necessary to do like a full migration again uh, after you have done it once. Uh, but if we are gonna see that we have supported the new capabilities or new uh new filters uh, or new data visualizations and the current ones that you have are iframed like in compatibility mode uh, then we will actually uh, migrate them back again as soon as we support those capabilities um and and marta i, I actually while, while i read on i saw that a uh, note from steven um one of the use cases for that migration is, of course, the content blocks, uh, where where I think when a content block um, has like normal plain text, um, we ideally would flip it into something like a, a rich text field or, or something like that. But what, what will happen? Is there anything that, that we want to say about the uh, support of static HTML? Yes, uh, for static HTML, so if like if you have created a, a content block that is of type static, uh, that will be transformed uh, into the rich text component that we have in the dashboard inline editor. Uh, instead, if you have created the content blocks with custom scripting inside and like the dynamic type of content blocks, um, those one will be in compatibility mode in the new platform analytics. Uh, you will be able to assess if they are still uh, working uh, with the current dashboards um, and with the migrated dashboards. Uh, um, if they are not working, uh, you can decide to roll back that specific dashboards and use it as a core UI uh, fully. I framed uh, into the new platform analytics experience. Uh, 
uh, otherwise um, you will need to for the content block like the more script, scripted and dynamic content block then most probably UI builder will be the solution uh, to create the technical capabilities. Rose, you've had your hand raised for uh, quite a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and allow you to talk and ask your question. Rose, you there? I apologize. I was wondering if we could see some screenshots of some of these things you're talking about, or is that not, um, you can't display what you're talking about when you're explaining some of these questions. Most, um, I, mean, I, I know a lot of what we've talked about has been covered with demos and screenshots in previous Academy sessions, but some of the details are still, I don't know that we even have a, uh, if we even have uh, prototypes that are at the level where we can take screenshots yet. I don't know, I'll let the some of the other folks speak to that. Well, I think for anything that is future, future in the sense that it hasn't been released or we haven't shown it yet in any sort of academy session or anything in the community or whatnot, that may be a little bit different. But what I'll make sure that we do, Rose, is make sure that in this community event itself, I will make sure that I attach. We've had yeah. probably four or five sessions in the last uh, three or four months that really are talking about uh, platform analytics experience and the next experience and everything that's sort of coming with that. I will make sure that I attach all of those events directly to this community event for reference for not only yourself, but, but for anybody else. Cause I think it's a good question. If you're not so much familiar with what's, what's happening uh, that's probably the easier thing to do, especially in a scenario like this, where we're just having an open forum of asking questions, I will definitely make sure. And then also what I like to do is if there is something that uh, corresponds from uh, an enablement or collateral perspective to whatever questions being asked, I'll make sure that I actually put it directly with that question. So not not what you it's not a situation where you'll have to read the question and hear the answer and then try to find something i'll make sure that i actually put a link in that particular question where there is collateral that you can go directly to and i think that that probably will will um, be able to help you a little bit but like dan said we have done quite a few sessions in the past few months and, uh, thomas that I, talk I a can, lot about this so go ahead, I, RJ. I can if we if we really like to i, I can quickly show uh, just one uh, one of the example decks that that we've been working on Sure. Uh, which is actually specifically on uh, like the main topic. What what is the platform analytics experience? Um, I'll I'll take the screen if you're okay with that. Sure, go for it. And I'll I'll Absolutely. keep it through. Uh, I'll try to keep it under two minutes. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I'm sharing the screen, right? Yes. All right, all right. So this is this just as an example to to your question, Rose, as in the the things that we've been talking about, um, like. Uh, Thomas mentioned um, there are a lot of specific questions on, on specific areas, but if we're talking about the main thing, the platform analytics experience, um, we we are creating that enablement content. Uh, if I quickly go through this one and show you just as the example of the thing that we're uh, going to put out there also for you to uh, to consume, to, to utilize maybe internally, um, information on, on what it is. Uh, like in our case, the platform analytics experience is the, the, the new analytics experience that we have consistent and unified um, and, and then explicitly elaborate on, on what's new. Like, why do we call it a unified analytics experience with, with examples, uh, why we're moving away from the current version, but also giving you these more uh, be, uh, what, what was before and what happens after uh, type of uh, examples. Um, what we do with the, with the charts, uh, the chart options, everything. Um, the fact that we call it unified means um, uh, because we because the whole solution is data source agnostic, we were able to build things more unified, meaning uh, we're not pushing you to all these different sort of application solutions that we had in the past, but basically just move you into single solutions to do your work. Um, if you want to build a chart, you can do it in a data visualization designer. If you want to build a dashboard, it's uh, there's one single way, uh, regardless of the data source you're using underneath, whether that's metric base or um, performance analytics indicators or glide table data or, or whatsoever. Uh, so explaining that again uh, before and after. So this is actually a good example before we would already have two pretty disjointed creation ways for just two data sources. We had the performance analytics forms as well as the report designer for Glide table data uh, and metric base uh, and now all into one. So 
again, as an example, also dashboards, uh, an old dashboard versus a new dashboard. Um, a little bit of extra capabilities because it's not just a lift and shift of features like feature parity. We're actually bringing a lot of amazing new things on the new dashboard. Um, so uh, information on that as well. Again, before and after, um, in this case, Analytics Hub, where you would do your slice and dice, explore your KPI data into the, the new options being the, the KPI details as well as KPI signals. Um, and that just as an example of uh, the things that we were talking about just now, like generically platform analytics experience. Thank you so much. That helped. Yeah. And, and then, by the way, expect these type of enablement material for uh, not just the, the generic part, but also the individual parts, for example, the, the visual designer or the dashboard builder, et cetera. Okay. And Olga, I think you had one that you were going to answer live. Oh, yeah, uh, I'll answer. The, the question is, so what's the difference between uh, how we should use dashboard and a workspace? We currently build dashboards in Classic as a homepage uh, place to get all work done. Is that what wall specs are? And uh, how do you see them different? Um, so the, the very simple workspace, of course, can be just that, a landing page and then some lists and forms. Um, but that would be very basic workspace probably and um, generally the workspace uh, allows you to get way more targeted experience where your uh, landing page is more personalized it can be more dynamic um, your navigation passes and interactions on it can be really more targeted to your experience so you can for example come from one page with analytics to another to get a very tailored experience to help your users to do the job done Generally, workspaces is um, designed not to have one job done, but kind of to cover the whole persona, right? If you have an agent, the agent will just work in this workspace to have all the information. They will have very handy overview of their cases. Then there will be maybe a right model next to it with their performance. So probably 90% of the time users will spend in this uh, workspace. It's like a big part of the job. While the dashboards, each dashboard is one kind of lens on your data. If you look at the dashboards, you probably will have uh, um, a lot of users will have access to maybe five, four dashboards. Some of them, they look daily. Some of them, it's on the monthly or on some other cadence. When we talk about generally whether, if it's very simple, it, it, within the workspace itself, there still could be a distinction. Like, do we just do a dashboard uh, as my landing page could work? Or do we want to have the uh, a regular uh, regular page uh, built in the UI builder? Uh, here that here your choice, like you can do both. It depends on the needs. It's if it's a very simple, just analytics, and your drill down will be to the KPI details and list, um, and there's nothing dynamic happening on it. You can just do. Um, do dashboard it will be much easier for you to build you can outsource it to the uh, business users uh, to build and customize it afterwards uh, plus users can um, easily by themselves update uh, and use different dashboard as a landing page uh, but if you want something more complex and more advanced you will just use the, the um, ui builder and build a regular uh, web page uh, which will be your landing page Okay, great. Thank you, Olga. Uh, Dan, you had one that you were going to answer? Yeah, this is just a question on now learning. Will will when will you be updating now learning to match the reporting and PA changes? There's a couple. It's really kind of a, a a process. There are a few trainings available in now learning today, like getting started with with the platform analytics. Right now, I think it's the workspace version and the inline editor. Um, but, uh, and then there was a really good, really good, uh, knowledge session that was recorded and available, uh, by, by our, our very own Thomas and Olga here on the call that was back at last, at the last knowledge session. Um, and, uh, so, and I am working directly with the, with the curriculum coordinator for this, for the platform analytics, and we are working on putting that sort of thing together. I know we're expecting to have some things available Q1 in now learning, and uh, there, and that will be there will definitely be more available throughout the year. But I so that that is coming. Okay, great. Thank you, Dan. 
So, um, RJ, Marta, Olga, you're on, you're on the hook for this one. Um, I, I think it's, I think it's awesome. All the things that we are adding, but the, the question is, is do we anticipate any slowdown? So the, t so the customers can actually, um, settle into what all the new things we have. Um, I know how I feel about it. I think that adding new things all the time is amazing, but I also understand the context of this question. Any of you all uh, want to take that? We, we, we don't expect, um, after this new uh, next experience, we don't expect any um, major changes, uh, UX changes, right? Your your experience changes, the navigation changes. The the they might be based on your, your customer feedback. We might fine tune something. Um, from there, we will be just adding new capabilities um, in the way like uh, whatever you were asking for for years maybe you wanted to have formulas for the report I don't know whatever you wanted right the, the, uh, but it's not gonna it's more like for you to adopt it right it's not like when you upgrade a new release you need to figure out what to learn so you then you can choose whether you use those features or you don't use these features so a lot of features are more on the insights on data insights uh, to help users to understand uh, better where to focus on, which is again, is up to you to uh, adopt an out and it generally doesn't require relearning things. It's just new capabilities, which you can pick up or don't pick up. So the customers who wants to slow down and focus on something else they can it's also it can be up to users some users want to use it some not it's uh should be um there will be no like these drastic changes right where we're moving from one place to another uh in the coming years um and hopefully the improvements we are doing for the performance as well will help you to scale better as well yeah, if I if I can quickly add, and I think that's spot on, Olga. The uh, the you mentioned it there. There's the the big change happening now. We we're, we're moving into this new um, environment, this this new experience world, um, which also allows us. So so that is a big change by itself. But it also allowed us to now finally do a lot of things that we were unfortunately not very easily able to do in the. In the in the last years, uh, many of those uh, ideation requests that we we saw happening, um, as well as just delivering value for multiple sources at once, the fact that things are unified and, and data source agnostic allows us to um, build consistent, which also helps then uh, of course eventually with the adoption of of things um, onto onto multiple data sources, things that you might use like like data insights that you were mentioning, uh, you might use it on performance analytics indicator data, but maybe also on table data. So I, I think moving forward with the fact that we're moving into these more single unified experience will absolutely help adoption and will actually decrease the, the, the need to learn new things and allow us to really build those uh, things more in detail, uh, more within that, that you, you have been all been asking for. So I, I think that was spot on. And I guess also in addition to just having the, the new capabilities, um, there will be also more tools like for the admins, what we discussed, like to, to help you to understand usage, to understand what you should focus on, what you shouldn't focus on, so you can manage everything much easier. Um, so hopefully it will help you to, with ease of mind, to improve your processes, adopt the new features and drive your business. Okay, great. Thank you both. So th this last question, uh, and then we'll close out the session. So um, what's the best approach to find out which users won't be able to see data on a report shared with them and will get access to this content denied based on report via ACLs note on a dashboard? Ideally, it'd be very helpful to know at the point of sharing a report, our instance is Vancouver. So I guess the question is, is there something out there currently that would let you know when you share something uh, with someone that they would have that? Or is there something on the radar to maybe do something like that in the future? Or is it definitely a great idea portal type uh, question there? There is nothing else mm -hmm. than impersonation. To, like for the, for the non-admin users, there's nothing out there. Right. It is a great idea. <laughs> 
I, yeah, I think how I understand it, the the question is, could we, upon share, uh, basically do that quick impersonation as in, hey, are, are people actually allowed to, to see the, the data underneath? It's and like then, what Microsoft does now, right? When you share yeah. the link to the SharePoint, it will check like that. Yeah, yeah but I think even, it's, even, even without impersonate, like when you share something, like even for something to tell you right then and there that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You just share with a user yeah, that has a, that doesn't have ACL access or something like that. Oh, yeah. Exactly. So it's something like right away if you share with a group or the role, like it will check if this role has access, right? If there's any restriction. Uh, it's uh, a great idea. We don't have it at the moment. Yeah, you know, I agree. I, I, uh, it's definitely, it's definitely not available now. But Lena, I think it's a great, it's a great question. And it's a great idea. I would definitely encourage you to. To go on high and and actually put in a an idea in the ideal portal so we can make sure that we can track that and get that on the radar for the future if we can make that happen. I think it's a it's a really great thing. So yeah, if you can do that, Lena, that that would be awesome. And I'll make sure that I put in the link to the ideal portal into the community uh, event as well. So that way, if you're unable to find it, it'll be there for, available for you. So uh, great. So with that, we have about a minute. So. Again, really great questions. We really appreciate the interaction and asking the questions. We really appreciate um, Dave, who came in with his questions locked in, all, all nine of them. I thought that was really awesome. Uh, and for anybody else that asked a question, that's great as well. But if you prepare and have those uh, readily available, that does definitely make things a little bit easier. So uh, we appreciate everybody joining and then also all of the uh, panelists that were able to join today always greatly appreciate the knowledge and the experience and the answers that you bring to these sessions. So real quickly, I'll just kind of go through some of these you already have seen. So uh, make sure that you're checking out the community. This event will be on the community page uh, later on this evening. Check out our pro tips if you're new to platform analytics or if you're trying to do some training and teaching within your organization as a whole. Um, now learning again, we talked about that a little bit today. What's we have some really great things that are already there and there's definitely some things that are in the future. And then in two weeks, which will be our last session of the year, uh, because of it's in the year and holidays and all those things, we're just going to do a real, uh, uh, quick recap of 2023 in review as it relates to the releases that have come around and all of the content and collateral that we've been able to provide for all of that stuff. And then in January, we'll start back up with some really great content. So again, thank you everybody who joined and we'll see everybody in two weeks for our last session of the year. Thank you.